Good morning. morning. Welcome to worship this morning. Um, My name is Pastor Christy, and it's good to be with you again on this beautiful morning. Um, Your bulletin has a couple different announcements for you to review. Looks like there's a big one on the back, uh, pork chop dinner, which sounds really good. Um, So does anybody else have any more announcements they want to make? Okay. Um, Let us prepare our hearts for worship this morning. You may rise as you're able, and we will begin with our confession and forgiveness, which is printed in your bulletin. Blessed be God, the one who forms us, Jesus, who bears the cross, the spirit who makes our joy complete. Let us bow before God in humility, confessing our sin. Steadfast and faithful God, you have revealed the ways of justice, yet we fail to follow you. We are overwhelmed by the world's violence and suffering. We are afraid to ask what we have for the sake of others, for the harm we have caused, known and unknown, forgive us. For the unjust demands we place on others and your creation, forgive us. For the ways we turn away from you and our neighbor, forgive us. Lead us back to you and set us on the right path. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, amen. Beloved in Christ, God's justice stretches beyond all understanding. God's compassion is beyond compare. In Jesus, God is always making a new way for us. In Christ, you are already and always forgiven. Our gathering hymn this morning is number 531 in your hymnal. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. the whole world, for the well 
praise. Let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Let us pray. God of love, giver of life, you know our frailties and failings. Give us your grace to overcome them. Keep us from those things that harm us and guide us in the way of salvation through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated and this time we will continue with the readings. Good morning. Good morning. Our first reading today is from Ezekiel, uh, chapter 18, verses 1 through 4, and 25 through 32. The word of the Lord came to me. What do you mean by repeating this proverb concerning the land of Israel? The parents have eaten sour grapes, and the children's teeth are set on edge. As I live, says the Lord, Lord God, this proverb shall no more be used by you in Israel, known that all lives are mine. The life of the parent as well as the life of the child is mine. It is only the person who sins that shall die. Yet, you say, the way of the Lord is unfair. Hear now, O house of Israel, is my way unfair? Is it not your ways that are unfair? When the righteous turn away from their righteousness and commit iniquity, they shall die for it. For the iniquity that they have committed, <clears throat> they shall die. Again, when the, the wicked turned away from the wickedness, they have committed and to do what is lawful and right. They shall save their life. Because they considered and turned away from all transgressions that they had committed, they shall surely live. They shall not die. Yet the house of Israel says, the way of the Lord is unfair. O house of Israel, are my ways unfair? Is it not your ways that are unfair? Therefore, I will judge you, O house of Israel, all of you according to your ways, says the Lord God. Repent and turn from all your transgressions, otherwise iniquity will be your ruin. Cast away from you all the transgressions that you have committed against me, and get yourselves a new heart and a new spirit. While, <clears throat> why will you die, O house of Israel? For you have no pleasure in the death of anyone, says the Lord God. Turn then and live. Our psalm today is Psalm 25, verses 1 through 9, read responsibly. You too, O Lord, I lift up my soul. Let none who look to you be put to shame. Rather, let those be put to shame whose are treacherous. Show me your ways, O Lord, and teach me your paths. Let me lead me in your truth and teach me. For you are the God of my salvation. In you I have trusted all the day long. Remember, O Lord, who from the Remember not the sins of my youth, 
and my transgressions, but remember me according to your steadfast love and for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. You lead the lowly in justice and teach the lowly in your way. Our second reading is from Philippians 2, verses 1 through 13. If then there is any encouragement in Christ, any consolation of, from love, any sharing of the Spirit, any compassion and sympathy, <clears throat> make my joy complete. Be of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or consent, but in humility regard others as better than yourselves. Let each of you look not to your own interest, but of the interest of others. Let the same mind be in you as in Christ Jesus, who, through, through, though he had, was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking him from form of a slave, being born in human likeness and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that the, at the name of Jesus every knee should bend, in heaven and in earth and under the earth. And every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Therefore, my beloved, just as you have always obeyed me, not only in my presence, but much more now in my absence, work Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who is at work in you, enabling you both to will and to work for his good pleasure. Here ends the reading. Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 21st chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. When Jesus entered the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came to him as he was teaching and said, By what authority are you doing these things, and who gave you this authority? Jesus said to them, I will also ask you one question. If you tell me the answer, then I will also tell you by what authority I do these things. Did the baptism of John come from heaven, or was it of human origin? <clears throat> and then they argued with one another. If we say from heaven, he will say to us, why then did you not believe him? But if we say of human origin, we are afraid for the crowd, for all regard John as a prophet. So they answered Jesus, we do not know. And he said to them, neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. What do you think? A man had two sons. He went to the first and said, son, go work in the vineyard today. He answered, I will not. But later he changed his mind and went. The father went to the second son and said the same. And he answered, I go, sir. But he did not go. Which of the two did the will of his father? They said the first. Jesus said to them, truly I tell you, the tax collectors and prostitutes are going into the kingdom of God ahead of you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes believed him. And even after you saw it, you did not change your minds and believe him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, o You may be seated. In one of our lessons this morning, we have a reading from Philippians. And we hear, the, embedded into the passage, we hear um, the early Christian hymn, often referred to as the Christ hymn. This is part of this letter that is sent by Apostle Paul to the early church at Philippi. Some scholars believe that the church at Philippi was experiencing a lot of inner conflict around that time that had consumed them as a community so much that they were not able to effectively um, go and spread the gospel. It hindered their mission. And at the same time, they believed they were experiencing some opposition from outside forces as well. So Paul writes to them a letter 
meant to encourage them. He said in verse 2, If then there is any encouragement in Christ, any consolation from love, any sharing in the Spirit, any compassion and sympathy, make my joy complete, be of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility regard others as better as your, than yourselves. Let each of you not look to your own interests, but to the interests of others. How many of us can relate to an experience of being in conflict? Perhaps even conflict within our congregations or our local communities or our households. Have you ever thought about how this might be hindering the work of spreading the gospel, of witnessing to Christ, of sharing God's love? It seems like now more than ever, there is so much evidence of conflict or division in our world. But this conflict has been part of the church since its beginning. What about opposition? How many of you have experienced or felt like you've been in times of hardship where you have felt this opposition coming at you for what you might believe or what you value or what you're trying to do? You struggle and doubt and wrestle and question if it's worth it. When we're faced with conflict or hardship, some of us may find joy in music and singing and hymns might be part of the reason why we come each Sunday morning to be encouraged, to be strengthened, and have our spirits lifted. So in this passage from Philippians today, we get to hear the words of what might possibly be the earliest hymn in existence called the Christ hymn. And this shouldn't be much of a surprise because Philippians is known as one of Paul's most joyful letters. It's a letter of thanksgiving. In chapter 1, he greets them by saying, I thank my God every time I remember you. He is constantly praying for him because of them sharing the gospel from the first day until now. And so he's trying to build a connection with this community as he also, at the same time, wants to offer teaching or correction. The strange thing is that he doesn't exactly tell them what to do in in his letter, he talks about how they relate to one another, but he doesn't really tell them what the answer is for the conflicts that they're facing. In fact, we don't really know exactly what it was about. But did you notice what he did say at least three times? He said that he emphasized that this change might come from their minds. He says to be of the same mind, to be of one mind, and then in verse 5, he says again, let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. And he goes on to say that, and to, to recite this, this hymn or this poem, it says that, who though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being born Found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. And the hymn goes on to say that therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at that name, Jesus, every name should bend in heaven on earth and under the earth. And every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Perhaps you've heard these, this text, this lyric in other hymns or other worship songs people have created over centuries. But the, perhaps the most shocking part about his letter is that this joyful letter with a song in it was written while Paul was in prison. One scholar, Mark Allen Powell, talks about that Paul himself went under, was under arrest. He was experiencing beating or pain. He knew that his own life might be near because of the work of God and Christ Jesus. He had given everything up, and he has long since learned still to be content in every circumstance, including prison. He, for him, living 
only meant to continue to serve and love Christ despite the threats around him. It's like he's showing us by example this paradox of power that we can use our power in the world to exploit others, to control others, but our freedom is found in letting go of our power and emptying ourselves and humbling ourselves. It's not from trying to control others. When we lean into this paradox of death and resurrection, we can see that that's where our true power lies. And let me be clear, this is not a really simple thing to do. It doesn't really come naturally to us. It's not easy. It's not convenient. It's not even really how our society functions. And it certainly isn't profitable. But the mind of Christ defies all logic of our day and built into the way of the cross of Jesus Christ is foolishness sometimes. Because why would God, who is perfect in divine power, become, take on human flesh in Jesus Christ? It doesn't make any sense. This Christ hymn is often read on Palm Sunday as Jesus is making his way into Jerusalem and getting closer to the cross and we hear in our gospel lesson from Matthew today this issue of who, where does Jesus' authority come from to do these things? What gives him the authority to have this triumphal entry into Jerusalem that would typically be reserved for a king? Who gave him his authority to teach um, in the temple or whether he's on the mountain? to heal people, to have the courage to interact with those tax collectors and prostitutes or people who would otherwise normally be stigmatized or shamed in society. Who gives him this purpose to die on the cross, to take, for this innocent man to take the place of the guilty? So the chief priests and the elders in the temple are not quite pleased with Jesus. They're w truly wondering and they ask him, by what authority are you doing these things? And who gave you this authority? And Jesus asks them a question, says, I'll tell you if you can answer one question. Well, the question kind of stumps them because they start arguing and grumbling, and they finally just give up and tell Jesus they don't know. And so Jesus doesn't tell them directly where his authority comes from. Instead, he tells them a parable about this father and his two sons. But he asks them a question. He says, what do you think? What do you think? Does that sound familiar? Similarly how Paul talked about what we think, what is in our minds. He talks about how this first son, he said he was not going to go to the vineyard. But he ended up going anyway and changed his mind. And the second son told him he would go, but then he didn't follow through. Mm -hmm. And Jesus asked them, which of these two did the will of his father? They said, the first, the one who changed his mind. So he tells them a warning or kind of disclaimer that these people, tax collectors and prostitutes, in their minds, these are chief priests and elders of the, of the temple. They would be very... Um, used to having a strong reputation. They don't want to be associated with tax collectors and prostitutes who are, quote, the bad people. But Jesus tells them that they're going ahead of him because they changed their minds and they believed what he was teaching and saying. Jesus talks about that we have this ability to change our mind, to be able to change what we think, what we believe, and how that ultimately changes how we feel and what actions come from that. So what do you think this morning? How would you answer Jesus' question? What do you think? Think about a time when you changed your mind and what that was like. Did you think that was going to be possible for you? What came out of that decision to change your mind? And when you think about your life when you leave this place from Monday to Saturday until you come here again, who has authority? Who has authority in your life, in your decisions? Who is the source of that? 
These are questions that we won't necessarily answer today, but that we take with us to ponder. This open question Jesus asks us, what do you think? What do you believe? It's the same God who gave Jesus the authority as a Messiah. This is the one who sent him to save the whole world. It's the same God who makes us church. One holy universal church around the world for, for thousands of years. We are of one mind. A type of unity that is hard to even imagine in a world like today when we are ridden with division and conflict all around us. And in this Christ hymn, it says that by the power of the Spirit, we can even confess that Jesus Christ, our Savior, is, is our Savior and Lord. Jesus, uh, Paul writes in Philippians that it is, for it is God who is at work in you, enabling you both to will and to work for his good pleasure. God's Spirit is abundantly giving us new things to think and to believe and new ideas every single day. And these thoughts, these things that happens in our minds and begins in our mind, have the capacity to restore us to wholeness. Maybe someone struggles with a lot of negative self-talk in their mind and they go and get therapy and they go and take medication or get help from a mental health professional and they're restored to wholeness in their mind. Maybe there's people who think that the other group that doesn't agree with them is their enemy, but they work together or they do a project together in the community and they find out they do have something in common. They have to change their mind about that person. We experience this every single day. There's so many different opportunities if we might just stop and pause and ask, what do I think about this? How is God inviting me to think and to dream and to be in a new way? It's by God's spirit that we are able to even experience transformation, be able to even change our minds. And I wonder if this ability to change our minds, we might be able to imagine that we're not alone in this journey, this journey to the cross, to the cross and this way of Christ in our life. We're never alone. There's another hymn that's one of my favorites. You may have heard it. It's French, and it's, it's called, translated as, Lord Jesus, you shall be my song as I journey. And it was created, believed to be created in the 1960s by a global contemplative order called the Little Sisters of Jesus. And some of you may have heard of the large La communities where people um, have come to know it. But it is this hymn that was also the favorite hymn of a former Warburg Seminary student, Ben Larson. And he died January 12, 2010 in an earthquake in Haiti. He was there with his wife and his cousin and other Warburg students at the time, and they were teaching theology and doing ministry there. I never met Ben, but when they had his memorial at Luther College, I was a student there. And somehow I just felt compelled to sit in the far corner of the upper balcony and to witness to this person that I didn't know and his life and his testimony. It was raining that day and it just kept pouring and pouring. You could hear the rain on the roof of the sanctuary. And I wondered if maybe God was also mourning with us on that day. I listened to stories of his life that the thing that people remembered about Ben was that he had this palpable joy almost in any circumstance. And one of the things he was known for was being a songwriter and his singing. And he had told his wife that he had wanted this hymn, this hymn I'm speaking of, to be played at his funeral someday. When he died, his wife said he, could, he was buried under this rubble from the earthquake, but she couldn't get to him, but she could still hear him and he was singing. He was giving praise to God and confessing Jesus Christ as his Lord, even in his last few breaths. And I wonder to this day, I don't know, but I wonder what hymn was he singing? What was he singing? The way he had sang his whole life. Imagine 
him possibly singing the words of this hymn, and it goes like this. Lord, you shall be my song as I journey. I'll tell everybody about you wherever I go. You alone are our life and our peace and our love. Lord Jesus, you shall be my song as I journey. Lord Jesus, I'll praise you as long as I journey. May all my joy be a faithful reflection of you. May the earth and the sea and the sky join my song. Lord Jesus, I'll praise you as long as I journey. As long as I live, Jesus, make me your servant to carry your cross and share all your burdens and tears. For you saved me by giving your body and blood. As long as I live, Jesus, make me your servant. I fear in the dark and the doubt of my journey, but courage will come with the sound of your steps by my side. And with all the family you saved by your love, we'll sing to the dawn at the end of our journey. You may rise as you are able. Remembering the caring and generous works of God, we pray for the church, creation, and the needs of our neighbors. We put our trust in you as we pray for the church. Give bishops, pastors, deacons, and teachers the gift of wisdom and discernment. Be with them in bold truth and faithful witness. Merciful God. Lead us in your truth as we pray for creation. Empower us to look to the interests of others as we make choices that impact the environment. Summon us to be advocates for healthy waterways, habitats, and air. Merciful God. 
Lead us in justice as we pray for those in government, the military, and other positions of authority. Give them humble and willing hearts looking to the needs of others. We pray for also for our enemies. Merciful God. Trusting your goodness, we pray for all caregivers and people who are sick or suffering in any way, especially Mark, Kate, Monty, Frankie, Jim, Larry, and Rich. Give them encouragement and consolation in your presence. Merciful God. Teach us your paths as we pray for this congregation. Be at work in us and unite us in your love as we labor together for the sake of the gospel. Merciful God. We give thanks for all the saints who died secure in the knowledge of salvation. Keep us fearless in our faith and certain of your resurrection. Merciful God. Remember us according to your steadfast love as we offer these and the prayers of our heart, trusting in your compassion made known through Jesus Christ. Amen. At this time, I invite you to share a sign of peace with one another. The Lord be with you. The peace of Christ be with you. <laughs> And once you've had a chance to say hi to almost everybody, um, we'll continue with our offering. You may be seated and the ushers may come forward. Thank you. 